On November 6, 2018, the state of Arizona will hold its general elections. All of Arizona executive officers will be up for election. The Real News will present a series of reports featuring the progressive candidates fighting for the Democratic nominations. The primary election will take place on August 28. You know, we're frustrated of, of money in politics. We're frustrated that everything's stuck. Alejandro Larios is a young Latino from Phoenix Central District, one of the city's more diverse areas, a blue district on which the Democratic nominee will almost assuredly win a seat in the Arizona House of Representatives. Opposing corporate Democrats for one of those seats, Larios runs a grassroots campaign and sees an upside in doing so. I think right now we're in a very unique time where the chances are greatest for a grassroots organization. I've felt for a long time that there was too much, um, there were too many, uh, too much was scripted, too much was calculated and overly analyzed to get votes, engagement, and it just wasn't authentic. And what we're seeing on folks, you know, here in Arizona, for example, we have more independents than we do registered Democrats or Republicans. You know, that's a clear indication that people are just sick of your typical politics. I think right now is the best time to run a grassroots campaign, um, a real grassroots team and effort on issues that affect everyone. With the primary elections rapidly approaching and a substantial funding gap in tow, Larios takes every opportunity to canvas houses and talk to people, even when it is 120 degrees Fahrenheit outside, a temperature that proved too much for our camera, which simply turned off while Larios kept going. We're focusing on working class issues. I don't care what color your skin is, I don't care where you land on that social economic graph. If you're a working class person, you share the same concerns as someone that's at the very bottom and someone that's at the middle, and they're seeing themselves slip. And so what we're seeing is all over the country, on both Republicans and Democrats, the, comf the most comfortable establishment candidates are losing, or they're coming close to losing, to people that weren't groomed by the, uh, you know, the, 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 big, the big wigs. Um, they weren't groomed by the establishment. Alejandro Larios finds echoes at the doors, especially when he talks working class issues. You can see his signs in many of the houses' windows. We're frustrated that uh, all of the policies that can help working class people are frozen because we don't have the votes, because it's unrealistic. Yet, every policy that helps corporations or deregulates environmental policies or human rights policies, or um, you know, collective bargaining policies, how, how come those are moving really fast? What is aligned in Washington and on a state level that's allowing those policies to pass, but when it's working class issues, when it's increasing our wages, when it's you know, those policies that strengthen the working class, you know, how come we can't find the votes for that? And we always find it for everything else. Larios thinks the immigration issue is being used to divide the working class. When you have, you know, when you have a group of people that are in the same social economic um, chapter or level, how do you divide them? Because you can't say it's, it's the ultra poor affecting the poor, right? That only works for so much before they realize I'm in that bracket. How you can divide folks is through race. And, and the old tactic which has been used for hundreds of years, it's the immigrants. Um, I think you can walk that back by just completely stating the facts over and over and over, but also through education. You know, the facts are on our side, so what can the Democratic Party in this case do to really explain and fulfill the fears of, you know, other people um, where it's a cultural issue, right? The grassroots candidate thinks the Democratic Party needs to understand the people supporting Trump as a first step in a battle to win them back. Um, their standard of living is not, is not improving. Uh, the cost of living is going up. They're seeing their jobs being shipped overseas. They're seeing their abilities to, um, they're seeing you know, their benefits being stripped and their abilities to bargain collectively are being stripped. So it makes people like that who are frustrated very vulnerable to take the bait and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I don't know why my life is getting more difficult. So when someone says it's immigration, when someone says it's, it's these people or it's the other party, it's a quick answer. Um, and they're taking the bait. In Arizona, race and constitutional rights of minorities have been an ongoing issue for more than a decade now. I think in Arizona it's a specific battleground because we've been dealing with this for a long time. And 
you might say the US is watching, the world's watching, and it continued to happen even under an Obama administration. Was there pushback? Yes, but lawsuits are one thing, and when people's lives are being ruined um, and damaged, you know, it's, those, those consequences can't be undone. So um, for me, one of the reasons I decided to run is because there is no more time to just, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see, because what was, what's normal today in politics was uh, crazy, would have seemed crazy a year ago. Fox News and other media pundits often call Sanders and the progressive of the Democratic Party the extreme left. Despite the intentional inaccurate labeling, Larios sees it as an opportunity. When you compare us to a lot of candidates in the rest of the industrialized world, um, we're, we're center left. Um, and, and so just reminding folks that that's what that is, right? But I, I think it's also backfiring because now more than ever, as they continue to call candidates um, that are a little off to the left in the United States socialists or democratic socialists, people are now beginning to feel comfortable with the term. You know, we've been seeing the Democratic Socialists of America, their um, amount of people that have, have signed up to be part of the you know, membership and a part of the organization has, has gone through the roof. Um, so I think it's backfiring to a certain point. Uh, and I think folks, you know, when, when I say at the doors, when I'm talking to voters, I talk to t you know, tons of voters every day. And I'm saying, look, I'm a working class candidate. And I just stick to the issues. Working class candidate, working for working class issues. And without labels, they completely agree. Even folks that come off that are maybe a little bit older, that are maybe even a little better off, better off than me and my family are, they agree with it. The Real News will continue to report on the race for control of the Democratic Party in Arizona. This is Oscar Leon.